the breath is where the mind and the body meet. We often have a sense that the, the solid part of our bodies is the part we know best, and the breath is something that just comes in and goes out. When you close your eyes, though, what do you sense of the body? There's kind of a shape, and then there's energy that flows back and forth, and that's actually our most direct perception of the body. We tend to overlook it. and focus on other things. But our primary sensation is right here. And so as we meditate, we're learning to get back in touch with that primary sensation, so that eventually we can use it as a mirror for the mind. Because as I said, it's where the mind and the body meet. And it's the part of the body that's most immediately sensitive to the mind. The way you breathe is very much affected by the mind states of mind you have. When you're worried about things, you breathe in a certain way. When you're happy about things, you breathe in another way. When there's anger, still another way of breathing. If you keep up certain ways of breathing, it's going to have an effect on other aspects of the body as well. It's through the breath that so many mental states can cause physical disease. particularly stress diseases. But you also notice certain ways that you hold your body. They're really shaped by the breath. And so one of the first things we have to do as we meditate is work through the breath energy in the body. Find some spot where the breathing feels comfortable. It might be at the tip of the nose, the middle of the chest, around the abdomen, base of the throat actually can be anywhere in the body. We feel that the sensation of in-breathing feels good and the sensation of out-breathing feels good. And then train yourself to stay with that sensation. In the beginning it may be something that's not all that impressive, just a, you know, a simple, comfortable feeling, a neutral feeling sometimes. But you find that if you stick with it, it gets more and more relaxing, more and more comfortable. It's like a fire. In the beginning, a fire is sometimes just this tiny little spark. Which you have to shelter against the wind. It takes a long time for it to, the fire to catch hold, for the fuel to catch fire. And once it does, then it begins to spread to the different parts of the fuel. It's the same with the body and the breath. You find one spot that seems small, not all that impressive, but it feels okay. But you stay with it, and it's the consistency of your attention that gives it strength. Once it feels more solid, more established, then you can start allowing it to spread to different parts of the body. The word jhana comes from a verb that means to burn. Pali has lots of different verbs for the word burning. And the one that's related to jhana, jayati, is used to describe a steady flame, like the flame of an oil lamp. The word for burning that they use for other things, say like a bonfire or a wood fire or a forest fire, that's a different word entirely. This steady, consistent flame, that's jayati, which relates to jhana. And that's the kind of consistency and steadiness we're trying to develop. It may start as a small, steady flame, and then you try to allow that steadiness to flow through the body. But first you have to have, to have that comfortable spot. If you go around the body, adjusting the breath here, adjusting the breath there, but without a real sense of comfort, then sometimes you make things worse. You're just messing things up. So it's important that you get this sense of ease first. Then you allow things to spread. so that your awareness fills the whole body. Your sense of comfortable breath energy fills the whole body as well. And then think of it as a healing procedure. Many times as soon as the mind gets still, the breath gets comfortable, and you think, well, what's next? 
Well, before we can move to the next state, there's a lot of healing that has to be done in the body, all the areas of tension and tightness and discomfort that you've allowed to get established within the body. The breath has to very gently massage them, very gently heal them, and sometimes it takes time. Just like a wound. You can't just say, poof, and it's gone. You have to put the medicine on. You the healing process takes time. So be patient with the breath. Once things get still, stay with it. And even though things may not seem to be happening, it's a slow, steady process of healing going on in the body. This is why patience is such an important part of this skill. When they talk about putting an effort into the meditation, the word for effort, all it really means persistence. It's a stick with a tividness that's going to make all the difference. The continuity of your focus, the steadiness of your persistence. That's what makes the breath a solid foundation for the mind. One of the problems in teaching meditation to people in America is that very few of us have learned any skills that require that kind of steadiness, that kind of patience. If you sharpen a knife, you just run it through the knife sharper, zip, zip, and it's done. Over in Thailand, though, when I had to sharpen a knife, I was given a big stone and the knife. And so, okay, be very careful that you don't try to be in too great of a hurry. Because if you get impatient, you may ruin the blade. So you have to be very consistent, very steady, and very patient as you work the blade over the wet stone. And you learn all the mental skills that go along with being patient. How not to get bored, how not to give up, the kind of conversation that goes on in the mind to keep you going. If you have any skills like that, well, think back on how you talk yourself into being patient, how you talk yourself being into, into being consistent, being persistent. And then bring those skills and apply them to the breath. So work with a sense of comfortable breath. Allow it to get comfortable. Allow it to be easeful. And then allow it to spread through the body. When it begins to spread through the body and it starts working through patterns of tension, you find a, there's a more intense sense of absorption. Stay with that. Learn the skills that are required to stay right at that point of balance where you, you're not pushing it too hard and you're not being too lazy and too lax. Just the right amount of interest, the right amount of attention and intention to keep things going. so that the breath can have a chance to sort of heal the wounds in the body and soothe the mind as well. Preparing both the body and the mind for the deeper stages of practice where the concentration gets stronger and your insights grow sharper, more subtle. But again, it's important that the groundwork be done. And the question of how soon you can move on to the next step, that's one of those questions you just don't ask. Just keep on doing the work. Things will develop. Just like a plant grows, you can't sit there and pull, pull, pull it out of the ground to make it grow faster. What happens, is, of course, is you uproot it, and that's the end of the plant. You just keep watering it, applying fertilizer removing the weeds as they come, and your patient effort will pay off. As long as you focus that effort in the right spot, which is the persistence, which is the attention and intention that you're bringing to the practice. As long as they're consistent, you can expect 
results will happen. Whether they're fast or slow doesn't matter the results. What matters is that they're solid. So stick with it. You've got a whole hour right now to be with the breath, and don't stop with the end of the hour. Try to maintain that sense of being centered inside with a sense of ease and comfort. As you bow down, get up and leave, go back to your spot. And continue meditating until it's time to go to bed. When you wake up tomorrow morning, try to be right here again, right here at the breath. It's this consistency that makes all the difference. <laughs>